Welcome to Pennsylvania in Focus. I'm Kristen Smith, Pennsylvania editor for the Center Square. Joining me today is the Center Square's Pennsylvania reporter, Anthony Hennon. This week, Anthony provided an update about a bill that would require hospitals to test urine samples for fentanyl and xylazine during drug screenings. It comes as a bit of a surprise that these two drugs, two of the most common additives in heroin, aren't already on hospitals' radar. But detecting the presence of these drugs in a patient's system is actually crucial. So, Anthony, tell us why this isn't so important. Yeah. So basically, when we're talking opioid use and illegal drugs, you know, it's not really heroin anymore. Fentanyl has almost completely displaced heroin in the drug supply and the illicit drug supply. So, and it's been a problem like this. I mean, for years. I mean, you can track just how many Pennsylvanians have died from uh, opioid overdoses. And uh, last year, it's looking like more than fifty-two hundred Pennsylvanians died from that, which is slightly down from a few previous years. Um, but compared to five or 10 years ago, I mean, it's, it's dramatically higher. And we're also seeing a, a new drug coming in, um, xylosine or, or a trank, trank as it's known on the street because it's an animal tranquilizer. And that's becoming more and more common in the drug supply. And we've been, we've been getting some warnings about that in recent years. But when we're looking at drug screenings in hospitals, when you know, um, healthcare workers are trying to diagnose patients with what's happening. Fentanyl and xylazine are not yet in that standard drug screening. So this bill is a Senate Bill 683, and it would essentially um, add those two to the list of drug screenings when they're trying to figure out what exactly is happening with the patient. You know, this is this is fairly new, not only in Pennsylvania, but nationally. Um, it's looking like California is the only state um, that has this law in effect, um, though that law will expire in about five years. So th- this is essentially an approach here of making sure that hospitals are properly testing for what's happening with someone and being able to pr- uh, better treat people who are suffering from addiction or something associated with addiction when they come into the hospital. And so whether this will move through, we're not quite sure yet. Um, it did pass u- unanimously in the Senate, so there does not seem to be as dramatic of a, a partisan divide here. Um, but for now, it's awaiting action in the uh, House Health Committee. Yeah, actually, you referenced a report in your writing here that says that uh, in a review of more than 315,000 emergency department overdose visits, only 5% of patients were testing for fentanyl. So of those, 40% came back positive. So this is this is something that absolutely needs to be addressed. And that is why looks like Senator Doug Mastriano is the one who's been pushing this, but as is most of the agreed to legislation in the, the the legislature right now, everything's kind of caught up until lawmakers come back from the budget. So where does this play in to the larger opioid crisis that we have going on? You, you spend a lot of time reporting about the different facets of this. Is this something that you're hearing from treatment providers and things like that, that we need more of? I mean, I, th- I think it's part of this recent trend in the in the General Assembly where they're paying more attention to these issues. Um, I mean, last session, the legislator approved um, legalizing fentanyl test strips. When you talk to you know recovery centers or harm reduction advocates, they're already out there, um, not only providing fentanyl test strips and xylazine test strips, but they're also trying to teach people some basic care and first aid surrounding these issues. So you know th- th- this tends to be the uh, the process here where when you have people working directly on the street with anyone suffering with an opioid use disorder or drug addiction, they start kind of sounding the alarm or noticing these things. But it takes a few years to really work their way, um, not only into the broader healthcare system, but also getting more attention from um, political leaders. Listeners can keep up with this story and more at thecentersquare.com. For Anthony Hennon, this is Kristen Smith. Please subscribe and thanks for listening.